It's with enormous pleasure that we welcome today Dr. Jerzy Kostrowicki. He is director of the Research Institute of Geography and Spatial Organization at the Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw. He was for eight years vice president of the International Geographical Union and he has served on the executive committee of several international organizations other than geography. Uh, welcome, Professor Kostorycki. I would like to, <laughs> I'd like first to ask you to relate something of your background, where you come from and why you became a geographer in the first place. Yeah, good. You see, my both of my life experience and practice in geography is rather unusual, mm -hmm. uh, since I never studied geography. No? <laughs> in a systematic way, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, being once asked what was my background, I answered that I'm agriculturalist by birth, biologist by love, economist by training, and geographer by profession. What is only partly true because I had a second love, it was history, or it is history. So this all, I think this, all these experiences contributed somewhat to my experience and practice in geography. Where from I am? <laughs> it's a long story. My family originated from the great principality of Lithuania, unified with Poland in the 14th century. According to the oldest documents, in the 16th century, my ancestors, living in the Minsk voivodship, uh, were several times sent as deputies to the Polish Diet, the Parliament. Mm -hmm. On the list of deputies of one of those diets that elected uh, John Sobieski to, uh, to be the Polish king, there were three Kostrowiskis. Yes. According to some other documents, <clears throat> some years later, one of them, Samuel, uh, moved westward to the Vilna Voivodship, founding the senior line of the family. Uh, when another line branched and moved to the north, I don't know. But what is interesting that from that branch descended a certain Angelika Kostrowicki, the mother of very well-known French poet, Guillaume Apollinaire, who was William Apollinaire Kostrovitsky. Oh, how fascinating. Yes. But most of the uh, Kostrovitsky stayed in the Minsk voivodeship at least until the World War I. Uh, later on, uh, during the Napoleonic period, one of my grand-grandfather was the officer of artillery in the army of the great, uh, great duchy, uh, duchy of uh, Warsaw. And uh, the, the best evidence was the, the remnants of the large library I catalogued when a boy, in which besides uh, Encyclo Grand Encyclopédie and uh, Dictionnaire Biographique, there were, uh, there were many uh, studies, many books on ballistics, artillery, mm -hmm. military engineering, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. After the, the Duchy of Warsaw was uh, disappeared, I should say, uh, my family moved to first to Dresden and then settled in Vienna and lived there uh, the last member of that uh, family lived until the end of the 19th century. They are buried in the Hitzing Cemetery in Vienna. What is interesting that together with the very famous, uh, at that time, Viennese dancer Fanny Elsler. Mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, they had to be maintained in Vienna for um, over uh, half of a century. Therefore, the my grand-grandfather and son, son of that Samuel uh, went back to uh, state in Poland and had to sell one landed estate after another to ma ma maintain uh, that family. And the vocabulary in the, in the geographical dictionary uh, published in the second part of the 19th century, there were quite a number of landed estates that belonged to, that, to, to our family. But uh, at the end, 
Before World War I, there was only one. And as my father had to pay uh, his brother, his sister, and his stepmother, uh, not much has been left uh, when he married um, my mother, just at the beginning of World War I. Uh, during the World War I, they were evacuated to Russia, uh, and therefore I was mi born in Minsk again. But this time by chance, just to, that was not, not, not connected with the place from where our family uh, came. And after coming back, we found ev um, everything to, uh, damaged, destroyed, and so on. And uh, then my mother used to say that land is not important. It is uh, what is important. It is what is you have in your head. And therefore, the, she had to sell another land to pay my education and then my junior brother. In, 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 at the end, before World War II, from many landed estates, we, uh, what remained, it was about 50 hectares of land, which was with ex quite extensive agriculture at that time, uh, very little and uh, greatly indebted. So we lived from the water mill, mostly. Uh, and that was the, our main <coughs> source of income. Uh, well, w World War II, first we left from our place just in September 39 and spent uh, some time in Vilna. Uh, then after uh, during the German occupation, at the beginning of the German occupation, we came back to our place. And that was the last time I was involved in farming. But I much, was much more involved in the underground movement. Mm -hmm. And when I became uh, finally the editor of the underground periodical, and uh, I was busy with those things. During which years were you? This was between for, for 41 and 44. Mm -hmm. uh, in 44, however, I was imprisoned. I spent three months and three days in prison, but I, uh, as I couldn't stand that, I escaped. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh, just in the D-Day, when I, I came to uh, the point uh, I, I knew to, to, to uh, stay, I was answered that the, uh, there was an invasion on the West, June the 6th, 44. Yes. Dramatic. Yes. Then we, uh, I, I went back to my place and together with the Polish underground troops that at that time they were not underground anymore, mm -hmm. uh, we went to uh, fight for Vilna. We took a part of that, but we, have, we were well armed, but without heavy weapons, we were stopped. And we stayed there until the Russian Soviet army arrived. Uh, they took Vilna. There were many losses in that. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I was very lucky, in fact, because I was in, uh, in, in several times in a very difficult situation, and fortunately, I was always managed to escape, to escape or to, to save my life. Anyway, uh, when the Russian sky came, we decided to um, go to Warsaw, thinking that everything will be de decided there. So with, with, with a, by small groups, some of people were left there, stayed there, from, and uh, with our colonel, the commanding officer of the province, we, and, and a certain group of officers, we walked across um, great forests, what we call Pusha, uh, to, to, to Grodno. Then uh, having contacts with the underground organization, we got some civilian dresses, and with smaller groups, we walked uh, behind the front. 
to Warsaw. However, the front stopped on in Warsaw for several months, mm -hmm. and we had to stay there and to wait what happens. Then after that, um, uh, the front moved. Uh, I moved westward, and they hear this very romantic story of my marriage mm -hmm. with my junior colleague uh, after five years of break. We found it, each other. She uh, learned from official sources, from German sources, that I was shot. I uh, learned from witnesses that she was dead during the Warsaw Prison. And we, we, we met and immediately got married <laughs> without waiting anything. Then, you know, there was, there was already a peace. I had to think what to do. Before the war, I had forgotten to say, I, st I started my studies in economics. I hesitated what to do. I wanted to be biologist, but I had a, uh, my uncle was a botanist and he was very, uh, it was very hard uh, to, to get, you know, any university position at that time. There were few universities only. And he uh, lost a lot of money for, uh, for education and then being the so-called, uh, well, free to send without payment. So uh, that wouldn't be very good for me. So I was thinking to, uh, what to do. Uh, I studied economics. And uh, I almost, uh, my studies were over in spite of final examinations. So after the war, I decided to, anyway, to, to pass my final examinations in the higher school of commerce, what was not very easy after seven years break, of yes. a break, yes, or six years probably. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I was thinking uh, for a while to come back to biology, but it was unrealistic uh, because of the, you know, I had already education and to, mm. to start a new, I was already too old. So uh, what happened? Now, I learned one day that my wife told me that there is an open position of the assistant at the chair of economic geography. I like geography always, but I used that as a background both for biology and history. But I never was thinking to be geographer. Mm -hmm. So, but as this position was open, I went there and I, I, I was appointed. Uh, an assistant in the higher school of commerce of economic geography. But earlier already, I started to work on the Bureau of Reconstruction of Wars as demographer. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I moved to the Central Office of Physical Planning, mm -hmm. and I worked there for some time. Uh, this was at the same time uh, as assistant, first without payment. Uh -huh. And then uh, in the central <coughs> office of physical planning. And just uh, when I was appointed and I started classes uh, in economic geography, I received the British Council scholarship to go to London, to, to the London School of Economics, yes. Could to I study geography you? And, and physical planning. Uh -huh. Before you go down to London, could I ask you what the feeling was when, just after the war in the university, was there a, a commitment to national development or was it just yeah. a kind of survival? Well, my, my, my studies were just <coughs> in economics, rather, rather uh, theoretical studies. But I started to work in planning. Mm -hmm. Of course, first of all, Warsaw was ruined completely. And uh, there was a special bureau for reconstruction of war. So I uh, worked in the special department of sociological, demographic, and economic studies as demographer. Yes. So I, uh, for instance, tried to predict uh, the number of the uh, future population of Warsaw. Mm -hmm. After 20 years, I, 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 I made, uh, wrote a, uh, some kind of study on the relation between number of inhabitants in the capital and in the country. Mm -hmm. And that was a later accepted as my master's thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, estimated that Warsaw, in, within 20 years, should reach about 2 million. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which was a little bit too much, but it's almost the same that what we reached uh -huh. just now. So you see now. Uh, yeah. So this this was what I was doing, and then in the uh, central office of physical planning, I was first in charge of economic regionalization, and uh, I was sent to London just to study uh, the methods of economic regionalization, which I, I was not very fond. And I, I studied a rather urban geography mm -hmm. than that, and particularly the development of geography during the war time in the United States, in Britain, and elsewhere, because Poland was cut out from the, those uh, developments for many years. Yes. And when I came back, I was having great advantages, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I learned what was in geography, what was the development, what are the theories, and so on. And, and Who were the key and, uh, people on that visit to London? Yeah, well, it, it, it was very fine, you know. After all those horrors of, of the war, I had nothing to do but to study. Mm. And that was the most beautiful thing yes. I really could imagine. Mm. And I studied under Dudley Stamp, which was a was wonderful professor and very nice person. After many years, we became very close friends with him. I cooperated with him later on. And uh, there were a lot of foreign students. And the British Council organized special uh, meetings every Friday to, uh, for, for those students. So I made a lot of uh, friends from various countries. So this was you know, a wonderful year for me. I learned a lot. Uh, and uh, also uh, I got a lot of experiences. I made many friends. So I came back with the baggage of uh, new ideas and uh, a lot of paper for, because I collected material for my PhD thesis mm -hmm. in, ur in urban geography. Mm -hmm. So that, that, was, that was wonderful. And of course, uh, I, uh, that, that um, changed very much in my life and in particularly in my position in the country. You had higher status when you got back. Well, so formally not, but <coughs> I, 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 I learned a lot and in the first meeting of the uh, Polish Geographical Society I had a paper on that subject, which was uh, heavily criticized on bo from both sides, from the conservatives and from the leftists. <laughs> <laughs> that was wishy-washy liberal, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but that, that, was, that was very, very good. And that how started my geographical career. Uh, I, I told, I, I was at the beginning after the war, I still think was thinking about coming back to biology. Without that position in ge geography, probably I would be demographer or, 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 yes. or a regional planner or something like that. What was the theme of that paper that you presented? Uh, after coming back from London? Yes. This was on the, the theoretical development. I don't remember the, the, the title, but this was the, uh, just on uh, theory of geography and developments in theory of geography uh, during the war time, mostly in the United States, because the, in the London School of Economics, but when the literature was plentiful in, mm -hmm. on that subject, so I, 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 I never even uh, had not enough time to study uh, everything. I, yeah. When <laughs> Dudley Stamp once. Uh, asked the British Council what are, are my, uh, what I have done. I brought about 20, you know, uh, how do you call this? Uh, yes, yeah, so, well, 20, such that they were full, filled with notes. So when he looked at that, that that's all right, that's all right. He, said. <laughs> <laughs> he did not want even to look <laughs> inside. Uh, but because when my English was poor, so I, I hardly could follow le uh, lectures and mm -hmm. classes. So I spent most of the time in the library. Yes. I, I could uh, easily read, but I, I, I hardly could understand the English. Uh, they understood me better, but uh, <laughs> yes. uh, but I, uh, after only f a few months, I really was uh, sure about myself uh, speaking English. So that in year in England was primarily memorable for the, the kind much. of orientation that Dudley Stamp gave you to applied uh, development yes, work, yes, yes. but also an orientation to a, a sounder theoretical approach right, to geography. Right, yes. right. And then you see, uh, it, it, it might be 
uh, strange because uh, uh, Dudley Stamp was renowned from his land, land use studies. Yes. But at that time, I was interested more, mainly in urban geography. Yes. But right. I learned a little bit about uh, land use studies as about the other problems concerned, but I did not think to come to, to this uh, problem, what happened later on. Mm -hmm. After coming back, I continued my studies with, uh, in, physical, uh, in, in, in Central Office of Physical Planning my work there, and I uh, w w worked on my PhD thesis based on this co collected material. And uh, in 1953, I joined the new formed Institute of Geography of the Polish Academy of Sciences, organized by, by Professor Leszczycki. Later on, he was the president of the Inter International Geographical Union. And to my astonishment, uh, I was relatively young and uh, with uh, poor experience, I was now appointed a deputy director within the institute. Probably I wasn't a very good deputy director because I didn't like that kind of work. But my ambition did not allow me to refuse uh -huh. that. So in spite of that, I, I uh, continued for several years. But uh, as I told, it's per perhaps uh, ironical to, to that in spite of uh, very little interest in that kind of work, uh, administrative work, uh, after a certain break between 1960 and 1972, uh, the period was uh, considered the most successful in my life, as research are concerned, I was reappointed again. Uh, and after the retirement of Leszczycki, I w became a director of the institute. I succeeded him. He was director for 20, 24 years. So 1977. To yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And to those who know my further research, mainly in uh, land use and agricultural geography, probably it would be astonishing that I started with urban geography. And uh, following my master's thesis uh, and my PhD thesis, which was on the elements of urban network. Uh, this, I s followed those kind of studies on functional classification of towns and on the basis of development of small towns that declined at that time, mm -hmm. which was also connected with uh, planning. Mm -hmm. uh, these studies on uh, developing of uh, towns uh, uh, led me to the undeveloped areas of Poland, mm -hmm. mostly of the northeastern voivodeship of Bialystok. <coughs> uh, and those studies were summarized by a large monograph and an original atlas. But at the same time, I took part in the first land utilization survey organized by the Institute, but not by me, but by, by, by Jabonski. You, you know yes. Jabonski. Yes. This is uh, part of the Dudley Stamp tradition coming Yes, out, and this was uh, following the, 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 the British mm -hmm. approach. Uh, the, those studies uh, were started by, by Jabonski, but with my uh, love to biology, I was quite you uh, know sure as far as the classification of forests or taxonomy of forests and, uh, and grasslands are concerned. So I was cycling um, uh, across woods and uh, meadows with the students, teaching them the classification of forests and in the field in the field of right. forests and, and uh, grasslands. Uh, so uh, but I did not think to go to uh, agricultural geography, but uh, what happened in, 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 uh, after, uh, uh, in 1955, we decided to organize a uh, whole country methodological discussion on, ge on, on, on human economic geography. Mm -hmm. We are not uh, happy with the approach, regional approach only. Uh, that was uh, followed before, and we found that in order to develop a better economic geography, uh, it should be specialized, more yes. specialized. But it appeared at that time that uh, all available professors were dealing with, uh, mostly in, 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 uh, urban 
or settlement geography. So we had decided finally to leave Jawoński, who was town planner and architect by training, to urban geography and population. Leszczycki took uh, industrial geography and, and geography of transportation, and me land use and agricultural geography. So the lot fell to you, as it were. It wasn't a deliberate choice. Yes, no, it, it wasn't at all. But we were fortunate, all of us, having uh, very able younger colleagues, yes. such as Kukliński, Kosiński, mm -hmm. Wrubel, mm -hmm. and Biegajlo, who not only helped us, but they um, contributed themselves very much to the development of those disciplines. For me, to, uh, in fact, it was uh, some kind of return to my roots, to agriculture. Yes. And I certainly knew much more about uh, biology and agriculture than the other professors. Yes. So for me, it was not easy task because I never, uh, was never interested in agricultural geography. But I, as I said, it would, would be probably easier for me than to the, for the other to, to, to deal with those problems. Uh, but I had to study a number of years together with my department the, the um, theoretical background of agricultural geography, the literature. It was quite a hard work for several years. But uh, what resulted was the uh, outline of agricultural geography of the world, a big book published in Polish and Italian. The Italians translated that. That's amazing. Uh, and uh, also the, another book on the transformations of the spatial structure of Polish agriculture between 1950 and 70 in Polish. And Polish agricultural characteristics, the types and regions in English. So that's what uh, results what we learned together in the, uh, in the field of agricultural geography. In the meantime, of course, the land use studies were uh, continued in this department. Mm -hmm. So Jawoński uh, only kept land use, uh, urban land use stu mm -hmm. studies, but rural land use, that was uh, I directed. Yes. And we uh, made a lot of studies in Poland, and after some time, um, based on the agreement with the other East Central European countries, uh, like Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, we went there on the exchange basis to, 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 to collect materials on field and to, uh, the, the result, the se several studies have been published on that. Yes, yes. Yes, but could I ask you about this yeah. theoretical discussion of the mid-50s? Uh, was it a discussion about how to orient the thematic uh, division of labor, as it were? You or see, was it to change uh, the... Poland, uh, you know, first this was, the, 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 you have to remember, this was Stalinist period. Yes. And there is an at, uh, attempt to, to follow the, the Soviet example, mm. which, uh, as far as physical geography was concerned, was very, very good. But uh, economic geography was, uh, was only regional geography, not specialized. We found after some time that this, this not, uh, could not ge uh, geography could not be developed by yes. this, this, this descriptions of various regions, mm -hmm. and therefore we organized that that, that conference to, to to discuss based on the um, uh, several papers uh, presenting the literature in uh, every of this field. Uh, collected from many countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we decided that specialization. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this, that we subdivided the institute among us, at least the, the, the economic or human geography mm -hmm. uh, in that way. So that, that, that was the first big theoretical conference, uh, geographical conference in Poland followed by some other later on, which was of minor, import, well, of minor importance. But, but that, that, that started some kind of, uh, well, renewal yes. in, in Polish uh, human geography. Mm -hmm. Physical geography was good and, followed and developed quite all right. They, they did not, the geography did not need such a you know, transformation. Yes. Yeah. But you didn't set a question, you didn't place a question mark about the basic methodology 
uh, from empirical descriptive to more deductive and yes uh, yes the basic methodology we had to study afterwards because yes. you know we decided to, to, to change but we did not know much I didn't yes. know much about the uh, agricultural geography we had to study the methodology the, the, the uh, into various uh, theoretical studies in the subject the same was with the other uh, branches so the, the next few years there was just a, a hard work to, yes. to, to study the literature from uh, all uh, advanced countries of the world, in advanced in geography. Yeah. So that, that, that is how it developed. But uh, uh, later on, but it, uh, we continued to, at the same time, besides, you know, uh, studying agricultural law, we've continued land use studies. Yes. So that, that, that uh, of course, uh, resulted in several publications on land use studies uh, covering not only Poland, but also these other countries with which we, we very well cooperated. In 1956, and this was the first International Geographical Congress where the Polish geographers participated and after World War II. Because before World War II, even one of the Congresses was in Poland in 1934, in, yes. yes. in Warsaw. But uh, for, for some years, for political reasons, uh, the, 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 the representatives, the geographers from the socialist countries did not take part in the con uh, Congresses. The 56 in Brazil was the first one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I presented there uh, a paper written together with Jewoński. Mm -hmm. uh, a kind of summary of land utilization survey of Poland. Mm -hmm. And I was invited by the chairman of the Commission of Land Use Survey, Professor Dudley Stamp, my former mm -hmm. yes. tutor, mm -hmm. to be a regular member of his commission. And that's how started my international career. I see. It's 1956. 56 in Brazil. Since that time, I attended most of the commission meetings in uh, many countries, in Stockholm, Honolulu, London, mm. and uh, Mexico, and uh, presenting various stages of our land use survey studies, and also uh, not only in Poland, but uh, in other countries of East Central Europe. Mm -hmm. And I finally organized a subcommission, a regional subcommission for that part of Europe. Uh -huh. That was going on until the sudden and unexpected death of Dudley Stamp in Mexico, when he uh, died. And uh, did the subcommission continue to work? Though? No, no. They, I, I, I. In fact, I didn't continue very much my cooperation with that commission after the uh, Dudley Stamp died. It was very much a personal thing with him, this whole world, world He was a wonderful man, you yes. know. He, 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 he was able to initiate a lot of things, and courage, and so on. Yes. Uh, and uh, then I, 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 another, you know, uh, idea came to my mind yes. uh, afterwards. Because when studying literature in agricultural geography, and particularly various classifications of agriculture of the world and the national scale, uh, including that by Derwent Whittlesey, yes. very well known, I c it came to my mind that it would be very good to work out a new, uh, improved version of such a classification. Yes. That idea was reflected in my paper presented in 1960 in Stockholm to the 19th International Geographical Congress. It happened that among the participants, uh, Ni Nicholas Helburn, uh, high school geography project, yeah, former yes. students of Whitlesey, yes, who just a few years before published an article on agricultural classification, yes, was present and he took part in the very vivid discussion on the subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, after the Congress was over, it came to my mind that it would be not bad to establish the, the, the commission, IGU commission, on agricultural typology. So next year, being in States as a visiting professor at uh, the University of Minnesota, I came to Bozeman to see Helburn uh -huh. and to discuss with them the, that, that problem. And we um, divided the world between us <laughs> and started to work. As Professor Brubel once said, this was a veritable presidential campaign. Yes. <laughs> we wrote to many uh, geographers, 
several dozens of letters to many geographers of the world that we supposed that could be interested to, and to support that project. And uh, we would be uh, anxious to cooperate. And as well as to most of the uh, IGU executive uh, national committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, in result, we m m have been promised quite uh, considerable support. Four national committees, uh, Australia, Belgium, Poland, and USA, submitted a common proposal. That's the uh, way to do politics. Yes, I guess. yes, well, the, 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 to, to, to uh, the executive committee in that um, matter. But you know, what happened? You know, just before the Congress, we learned that another proposal was also submitted to establish the Commission on Agricultural Termi Terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, both were uh, about agricultural and typology and terminology. It, it, it sounds it was similar. With tea. So yes, it with T and G. So you know then. So uh, many national committees started to co confuse these two proposals, and there were some suggestions to merge them or to. Subordinate, to subordinate the typology to, to terminology, in spite of the terminology is more narrow. Yes. So we had to fight uh, very much, and uh, uh, trying to explain that the, to, and, and to, to, to various national committees and to executive committee, this is that that, that was not the same. Finally, we uh, gained also a considerable support from the pre-Congress Symposium on Agriculture and Geography held in Liverpool in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. And finally, the Executive Committee decided to uh, vote that, that uh, these two proposals be voted separately. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, our proposal was approved by a very slight majority, and the other failed. I became president, and Nick Helburn is the secretary of that commission. And now how, you, how it started another, you know, uh, very interesting period of my life. Plenty of work had to be done to make this commission moving. Mm -hmm. The circular letters with the questionnaires were distributed to over 100 specialists from the world over to ask their opinions uh, on the basic concept, principles, methods, and techniques of agricultural typology. Over 50 individual answers were arrived and, and, and several reports from the discussion on the subject. The, the, those answers arranged and commented were distributed uh, to all the participants. And those uh, answers, some of them were so fine, so good that they could be discussed separately. And, uh, I, there's no time to mention about them, but it, is, it was really wonderful material we collected. Mm -hmm. The Commission had been active for 12 years. Its extension being voted twice, once with the one vote against of Uganda, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and the second, the unanimity. And uh, we had seven plenary meetings in various parts of uh, the world. We published um, seven volumes of proceedings with um, over tw 125 papers and uh, plus uh, 40 read by title. So uh, also the number of typological studies uh, were published elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Did you come to some uh, consensus about uh, a basic right. typology? After, after the long discussion, well, sometimes hopeless, because, yes. we, because uh, uh, new people used to come to the meetings with new ideas, mm -hmm. and uh, they, without knowing what has been already discussed. And, uh, and only after eight years in Canada, in 72, I found that there was already a group thinking in the same way you know, and uh, understanding the problem in, the, the, the also in, the, in a similar way. So that, that was just a kind of crucial yes. uh, point. Mm -hmm. That was in 72? 72, yes. yes. And uh, methods and techniques were, were, were mm -hmm. improved and tested in the different countries and again improved and discussed and then, then tested and so we, we, between uh, each of those meetings mm -hmm. there was, was uh, the, the improvement. Finally, uh, the Commission has been 
Uh, this, this continued after 12 years in, in 1976, but the work was continued yes. by some people interested, and in result uh, we presented to the uh, International Geographical Congress in Paris two years ago mm -hmm. uh, the, the type of agricultural, agricultural map of Europe. Yes. As a common work. I have seen that map yeah, on your wall that. in Warsaw. Yes, that's yes, the yes, one. yes, that's the, the, the same. And uh, that uh, map uh, raised also some interests, not only of geographers, but other international organizations, including UNESCO. Yes, yes. Uh, what the so map shows is agrarian society or agrarian... No, this, this, uh, this is agricultural types where uh, each was based on 28 indices yes. showing every important uh, side of agriculture, yes. social and ownership problems, yes. inputs, mm -hmm. outputs mm -hmm. and structures. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 each, each uh, type is presented in a code Yes. with 28 digits yes. and then the, such, a, such a code is uh, compared with model codes established mm -hmm. um, based on the uh, number of studies and, and the literature and then if it is uh, fits to that uh, if the distance between the model code and the, the type of the first, second and third order because there are three orders mm -hmm is, is uh, not big enough, it, it, it's, it's considered to be of that time. If this is bigger, there is a basis for, a, for uh, describing new time. Yes. This is like in biology, you know, the, the classification uh, is, is, uh, exists, but if uh, a new bird or a new plant is discovered, mm. it, it, is, it is compared with the other uh, yes. certain classes of, and so on, and, uh, and described. In terms of its fit. Uh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that, this is this again my biological lab, yes, you know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this uh, period uh, ended, not ended in fact with the uh, the commission was discontinued, but was continued uh, later on. And uh, as I told, some international organization got interested. And, uh, and uh, you know, that the, the most important problem to convince the other it is just to show a good example. This exactly. is the best way. A good and they, that we treated Europe as such an example. Yes. yes. And so, uh, then we, we sold a lot of these maps in dollars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the, the various organizations got, organizations got interested. UNESCO, uh, for instance, uh, and there was a problem. Uh, mm, whether mm, uh, that this work could be extended to other continents. Mm -hmm. That's why I always was dreaming, but we had not enough mm -hmm. man, money. Mm -hmm. So first I had to write for UNESCO a kind of methodological review yes. mm -hmm. that was accepted, first of all. It was uh, concluded that there are no methodological problems with such an extension, but organizational and financial, mm -hmm. first of all. It was agreed that, that the appropriate proposal, project proposal, be submitted to UNESCO. Uh, and we shall see what happens. You know, the UNESCO is now poorer. Yes. <laughs> uh, then it, I'm rather pessimistic, but we shall see. But just, just recently also, Yes, you know the Institute of, uh, yes. from Vienna yes. of, uh, got interested of that, in that kind of studies as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, what uh, I was, um, in which I was busy during the last 20 years as far as, far as the international scale is concerned, in, including my visiting professorships in the United States. I spent about two years as a visiting professor in Oregon, Seattle, Minneapolis at the beginning, mm -hmm. and so on, and then in Ottawa, mm -hmm. in Canada. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a, a number of those various other organizations that uh, as a uh, member of the IGU executive committee, I was uh, nominated as a delegate, and usually they, they invited me to the executive committee after some time. Mm -hmm. So I became the member of the executive of the International Social Science Council, and I served for two terms, 
it was a very interesting experience. I, prom I always tried to promote interdisciplinary studies yes, yes. with mm -hmm. some positive results at the end. Mm -hmm. Then I was sent as a delegate to the uh, General Assembly, the mm -hmm. delegate of the uh, IGU, to the General Assembly of SCOPE, mm -hmm. Scientific Com Committee on Problems of the Environment, and immediately I was elected to the Executive Committee. I'm still there. And not mentioning some other organizations. Yes, well, you see, maybe in that long family uh, story you told at the beginning, there is something uh, in the genes, as it were, which is trying to take leadership positions whether uh, they want it or not. You didn't want to be, become director of the department, but you were elected. No, so I, 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 I was a director of the institute after yes. Leszczycki retired. Yes. But I'm not very fond of that kind no. of work, but, but that was such a situation. Yes. Uh, this year is my third term. Mm. And I'm uh, thinking not to continue now, mm. to, 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 to pass this to somebody uh, younger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, you've done it very successfully, I think. I, I want to go back to this question of uh, your visit to America. Yes. Uh, I was a student when you came to Seattle, I remember very well. But the image of Poland... Well, we visited you with Corcel, you remember? Yes, I do well. <laughs> <laughs> that was at Clark later, but you had visited University yeah. of Washington right, right, earlier, right, yes. Right. But the image we got was of a Polish school that was really lively, dynamic, and quite quantitative. It was not only using quantitative methods, but it was applying its work for practical problem solving. Was that part of this 55-56 ethos? Yes, yes, that started there. There were several other methodological conferences, and one was specially for this quantitative methods, you know, those with that. And, but I think that Polish geography very um, seldom exaggerated, because there was, you know, there were a lot of exaggerations in this. But uh, we, we, we kept that as a, as a technique which is necessary, very important, but uh, that doesn't solve everything in the world. No. But your way of working out a classification system is uh, what I would characterize as typically formist. Yes? People who like to categorize and classify, yielding better descriptions and so on. Is, would I be right in saying that that's your, your, your fundamental worldview would be a formist one? Maybe you are right, because I, 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 one could say that I'm a professional classifier. Yes. I, cl I started with classification of those forests and, and uh, grasslands, then classification of towns, then classifications of uh, land use uh, categories, and then the so-called orientations or, or, or combinations, crop combinations and so on, then, land, then types of agriculture. So some of them were followed in another country, some of those methods not. You enjoy classifying. Yes, I, but this I think again uh, uh, from my roots, from biology. Yes. Because as a young boy, I knew uh, quite well the classification of uh, taxonomy of plants, uh, animals, and so on. I, I know much less now than I, I used to know when I was 12, 15 years old. And you see no conflict between that uh, worldview and the kind of systems theoretical worldview that no, is developing the, 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 the urban helps, and the, the, you know, the, because the, the systems approach is also uh, could, could serve classifications. Mm -hmm. So this this is this is all right. That that that's, that's, uh, helps one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so Poland was in, held up to us as an example in Washington, like Sweden was. But I have the impression that certainly in Sweden the wave has, is, has already gone past. Is it the same in Poland, that geography has changed? Uh, geography has changed, but more, maybe not so much. But we have several people who are theoreticians, and that's it's all right. They are working on the theoretical basis, basis of geography. There are some methodologists, and there are some descriptionists. They, they describe what they see, they study, and so on. And uh, one serves another, I, I think. The, the description is better with some uh, methodological um, background. Mm -hmm. And the methodological background should be also uh, based on the reality. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't serve anything. Mm. You described the initial period, the post-war, as being three big names, as it were, agricultural, yes. urban, and uh, settlement. Yes. Uh, has the structure changed now? Is, could you still describe mm. it as 
a school where there are you, three big names. You, well, uh, you see, uh, uh, this, this Leszczycki and Dziewoński, these are really big names. Both are retired already. Uh, Leszczycki was for 24 years also the uh, chairman of the interdisciplinary committee at the Academy of Sciences for what it is difficult uh, to exp express in English in French is aménagement de territoire. Yes. Regional planning, it's management. Not, not the same. No, it is not the same. Course, no. uh, and this committee exists, mm -hmm. and uh, Jawoński took after Leszczycki, and he is now a chairman. Yes. But he, in spite, he is retired. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the Polish approach was, you know, a kind of combination of theoretical basis with application of our studies, studies in practice. This was the idea of Leszczycki. Could you uh, uh, imagine that Leszczycki made a study before the war, and uh, he wanted that study to be his hospitalization thesis, but it was rejected because it was considered too practical. I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. It is a uh, uh, study on the amenagement development of sub uh, yes. region. Well, that was and he had to write schools. another one, which was completely out of the any practice, uh, practical needs, because it was by, on, on rural settlements of, uh, of, in Anatolia, <laughs> based on the expedition oh, there. There are many stories. In, for his 18th, uh, 18th anniversary, we are going to publish this study, which was never published because of the war. Wonderful. On May and this is studied both in historical geography and history of geography, because you see the approach from that, and he did not change any point there. That is very interesting. That'll be a f will it be in English? That will be in, uh, no, in, Polish. in Polish. It would be an interesting thing to have for international consumption. Yeah. Yes. This is just uh, yes. now in print. Yes. Next year in May mm -hmm. will be his uh, 80th, 80th anniversary. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have made a note of that already. Yeah. In a brief couple of words, can you describe the situation of, Pol of geography in Poland today? What are the main uh, challenges? Uh, points of positive well, growth? Uh, I think the geography is strong in Poland uh, in general. That could be measured by the position in the academy. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are uh, seven members of, of uh, geographers, members of the academy, which is in the section uh, of earth sciences equivalent to geology, but more than any other um, discipline mm -hmm. uh, of uh, earth sciences. Geodesy, geophysics, uh, also mining, and so on. Mm. And uh, I think the position is strong, both as, as a science and in practice, because Polish geography was always involved in physical planning, yes. in regional planning, yes. and so on. Leszczycki was, uh, as I mentioned already, I was former planner. Yes. Uh, Dziewoński was, was is still a planner. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation continued that. Yes. Uh, and uh, we had three excellent people uh, on the now already, in, uh, not young, but, but uh, mi middle age. Uh, one of them is, was Kuklinski, whom you know. Mm. And another is the present uh, Secretary General of the International Geographical Shinsky. Union, who was my student. Really? The best I ever had. Uh -huh. and, and, and the third is Vrubel, a theoretician. Uh, so this, these three are the, that's the next generation, uh, the best, and they are still younger, like Corcelli, like uh, another. Unfortunately, we lost a very promising young uh, agricultural geographer, Bigailo, who died in his 40s, the heart attack, suddenly. Very honest man, excellent geographer. He will be, he will be professor now. Yeah, but, but uh, we were happy to have many bright young people that, that follow and develop that line. Not only follow, they developed it. Everyone, every one of them uh, took another path, you direction, know, yes, in the yes. direction. Uh, Leszek Kosiński migrated to Canada. Yes. To Canada. Yes. Uh, uh, Kukliński is at the university. Only Rubel stays in the, in, the, in, the, in the Academy Institute. But there are the next generations. And again, a, a number of very able young people, yes. very bright. So this, uh, this is going on. I think that the that institute, uh, institute could continue very good. Um, that uh, very, very well in the future. 
Well, on that very positive note, I want to thank you very much, Professor Kostrovitsky, for a most fascinating story. And uh, all the very best to geography in Poland. Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Okay.